Good evening, everyone, um, and welcome to the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee of, um, I think we're on the 23rd? 27th, thank you, um, of September. Um, so, um, first item is apologies for absence. I have apologies from Councillor Tina Clements and Councillor Simon People, and I believe he would got somebody for substitute, Ken, Ken Norkey, but he's unavailable now as well, so uh, no other. He's, uh, he's just back from Torquay, actually, um, and had a difficult journey coming down, I believe. Um, so, no other apologies. Um, this is a single item meeting, so um, we'll, we'll look at the minutes of the, of the previous meeting uh, at, next, um, at our next scheduled meeting. So, item two are declarations of interest. John. Thank you, Chair. Um, it won't affect this discussion in any way, but just for transparency, um, I was Cabinet Member with responsibility for waste management at the start of the discussions about the dry recycling contract renewal. As I say, all decisions were made after I moved to other things, so it won't have any effect on this discussion, but just for transparency. Thank, thank you, John. And I think um, useful and important just to, to, to make that statement. So on to item three, which is the, the, the reason we're here tonight, which is the um, scrutiny calling of the future dry recycling update that was at Cabinet on the 9th of September, I think. Um, and really, we want to look at the, the decision with regard to the practicalities of the collection method rather than the um, the fact that um, a dual stream um, collection is is really necessary. Um, I'm not sure if Danny or um, or Andrew, you want to just give a little bit of a brief um, brief update on where where we are and how we got there. Uh, yeah, uh, you just want a quick two three minutes of the journey to yeah. why we're sat here. Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Chairman, not a problem. Uh, as I hope councillors will recall, um, his historically, um, you know, we've collected dry recycling and we've sold it to the uh, recycling market. Um, you know, if you go back 15 years, we used to make an absolute fortune out of selling our dry recycler. Uh, the prices aren't there like they were 15 years ago, but we still do sell it, which helps underpin uh, the costs of collection and running a waste management service in Tamworth and Litchfield, obviously, with our joint waste partner. Uh, the problem started when China announced in around 2018 they were changing their national policy and they no longer wanted to be the world's dumping ground, which means they would only take quality recycling, uh, not recycling that's been contaminated by all being thrown in the same bin, which gave us a fundamental challenge. Uh, without going into commercial details, obviously Tamworth Borough Council in partnership with Litchfield collects uh, the recycling. We currently do what's called co-mingled, you all throw it all in a blue bin and Nigel's teams happily take it away every two weeks. The problem with that is because the paper and the card is mixed with the plastic and the tins and everything else, you get to an, an element of contamination of the paper and card. It makes it less valuable to the market and the market stopped wanting it, which meant um, we, we contract out the dealing with the recycling once it's been collected. Won't name the company, obviously. What they were starting to have to do was put the recycling into trucks and send them from Aldridge up to Gateshead to a cleaning facility and then fetch it back to then export it and it was costing an absolute fortune. Cabinet did agree a small increase on our payments to them in 2018, I believe, uh, but not for the full cost because they were under contract. That contract comes to an end March next year. So obviously we've had to, under tendering regulations, go back out to the market and open ourselves up to, this is what we want to provide. Can the market come back with options and costs? Uh, those options and costs, as Councillor Chesworth will remember, started filtering back in around January. And it became very clear for it to be an effective service uh, and an affordable service, we would have to move from co-mingled, throwing it all in one bin, into dual stream. Therefore, we could produce some quality, um, you know, recycled um, materials that we could give to the market and the market could handle without HGVs having to go up and down the A1 every day, which is not anybody wants to see that, you know, for the environmental impact. We don't want to see more CO2 pumped into the air. So a decision was made to go towards dual stream. 
at which point we analysed all the options that came back and it came back with six real options from the tenders we've had back in from the market. Um, option one and two was stay as we are, but well, we knew we couldn't and we couldn't afford to either, it was too expensive. We also know with the government white paper currently being discussed, we think they wouldn't have let us. So if we'd have signed another three year contract to continue as we are, we think we've got, we got ourselves in awful trouble with the government over the next few years. Options three and four uh, were, you know, uh, two bins. So for argument's sake, week one, your black bin. Week two, we'd collect your paper and card. Week three, your black bin. Week four, we'd collect your uh, other recycling. And that would be in two different bins for your recycling. Um, the difference in the two options would be if option three would be Tamworth Borough Council remains the disposal authority. Option four is we hand back the responsibility to the county council to arrange disposal and we only collect. We then go to options five and six, which was a bin and a bag, where the paper and the card would go in a sack. There's one at the end of the room to give you a demonstration of what the sack looks like. And again, option five and six were split whether we did it or the county council did it. Uh, after much deliberation, uh, the decision was made to uh, pursue the option of doing a bin and a bag along option five with Tangworth Borough Council remaining the disposal agent, as long as a suitable deal could be done with the county council around the disposal cost, because technically they are the disposal agent, we're just the collection agent. Uh, after much backwards and forwards with the county council, in around late July we finally came to a financial deal with a review in 12 months to make sure it is the right financial deal, that they would cover in essence 50% of the additional disposal costs. Uh, it seems fair and equitable. So we then took the report to Cabinet, Cabinet has endorsed it, so we're pr proceeding at the minute along that line, hoping to implement the new service around May next year. Litchfield, our partners, going around April. Uh, I believe it's also been through scrutiny twice and been endorsed twice. So that's, that's the journey of how we got here, that's the rationale. Um, to give you a, a concept, if we went to purchase the bags for all the properties, let's leave high rise flats to one side for a second, for all the properties, to purchase the bags is around 104k to purchase all the bags for Tamworth residents. If you want to purchase actual plastic wheelie bins, you're looking close at eight, nine hundred thousand pound. It would also take nine months to 12 months to order that quantity, which means we would miss our deadline of uh, May next year. If we miss our deadline of May next year, we're looking at 100 to 200,000 in costs while we delay the transition to the new service while continuing co-mingled. Basically, if we move to bins, I'm going to be asking Andrew Barrett for another million pound instant hit next year while we've already got financial problems. That's not me trying to guide you in a direction. Happy to have the open discussion. Um, obviously, we looked at many different ways of disposal. There is the old method of the bin inside the bin. But you know, you've got to remember that a lot of waste management staff that are in the bin trucks out on our streets every morning, and I don't know why this happens, but the demographic tends to be, they tend to be over the age of 50. Councils that have historically done the bin inside the bin, the caddy if you will, have suffered with a lot of staff getting hernias, and I know there's a lot of councils that have had that process and have phased it out, and I think Stafford is an example. So that was a consideration we fetched in, that you know, we don't want the bin inside the bin, because you'd be asking you know, th these men you know, 3,000 times a week to lift a heavy bin out of a bin and put it back, and it just gets really tiring on our workforce. So it was an option we considered, but we couldn't pursue. So here we are, that's why uh, the rationale from Cabinet is to go with the bag for paper and card, and you keep your blue bin for plastics and your tins, etc., and then go on a, a week one black, week two, one of them, week three black, week four, the other one, and then look to, uh, look to implement around May next year. Uh, is the current timetable, depending on deliberations here and more deliberations at Cabinet. So I think I've covered everything, Andrew Nigel. I don't think I've missed that much, have I? If I may, um, Andrew, Chair, yeah. just, just to say the one um, urgency in this, the, the financial package that's been put forward from the County Council has got a backstop date of the end of June next year um, for, um, sort of for full settlement. So our deadline, if, if you like, is we have to be... Um, whatever we choose to do, we have to be implemented at the latest by the end of June 2022 for the deal still to be um, on the table and in its current format. Thanks. Moving on. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Danny and, uh, and Andrew. Um, okay, so, so I have a number of questions and I'm just going to kick off before inviting... Uh, the rest of committee to uh, to to uh, to get involved. So the first point, I guess, is that our our own comms says we're 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 moving to a bag, and that's like a commitment that we're 
that we've made that decision. Um, is is that is that effectively true? That's that's uh, the the position at the moment is that we are definitely going to a bag. That that's the current decision, unless somebody tells me we're going in a different direction, yep. which would probably need a reversal at cabinet or potentially full council. Yep. But yeah, the decision currently is to go with the bin okay. and the bag, unless somebody tells us three we're going in a different direction. So, okay, th thanks, Danny. Um, because the Cabinet report refers to a joint scrutiny task group to shape the operational detail. Now, is the operational detail the collection method, or what What does that actually... What's the operational detail of... Can you explain that? Yeah, I, might, I might ask Nigel to, to come in on some bits and pieces. Okay. It's around how, um, how the crews work, how the paper and card is, is collected? Is it, it? Do they carry the bag from the back of you know from from the, the point where it's left? Do they put it into something called a slave bin, which is a bin that they wheel around with them to fill up? Um, so that's that's the operational detail. Okay. The, the methodology um, has been enshrined in the um, okay. in the cabinet decision. Okay. Um, but I think it, it is important that um, we actually have a, a a joint scrutiny group to actually look at this because it, it's. The devil is very much in the detail, and um, people may not actually understand what it means to them. And certainly, as users of the service, um, particularly across two authorities, I think it'd be very useful to have that level of insight into shaping how it will, how, you know, what it'll look like, what it'll feel like. Anything you'd like to add to that, Nigel? Yes, thank you. It's really the fine tuning at the end of the day. Okay. Um, how many bags would you let a resident have? Well, you know, it's, is it going to be one? Is it two? Is it three? It's really getting down into the detail at the end of the day. You know, the broad methodology is the bin and the bag, but there is there's quite a lot of thought to be given, especially you know mitigating things like you know where the where we're going to put the bag after we've emptied it. Just getting down to the policies and procedures, and there's quite a bit of work still to be done. But um, you know, it's uh, it, it's good to involve politicians and on uh, all levels at the end of the day um, it's a service we've got to engage at all levels from residents to the to the contractors to the call handlers uh, you have to get the service right for everybody and that, that's what that process will do okay thanks Nigel Danny uh, yeah I mean th there's other things we've got the high level idea of what we want to do but we've now got to drill down into the day-to-day -day, how does the operation work and we've got what's called local decision where we have the option that Litchfield might go one way, we might go the other, and it's a local decision and depending on cost and other factors. For example, if you've got one of those bags and you completely fill it one week because you've ordered all your Christmas presents from Amazon, would we allow you to put a clear plastic bag out with the spare card and then we'd empty it for you? We've got to drill down. Into, would we allow that? Wouldn't we allow it? We just need to understand what that means. So there is still some operational parameters to work out, and we're looking for that joint scrutiny task force, for want of a better word, to work together between councillors Litchfield and Tamworth and drill down in what sort of service do we want to see when we start unfolding this. Thanks. Thanks, Danny. OK, so... There's a number of properties in, in Tamworth that have multiple blue recycling bins. Do we, do we know how many, uh, as a percentage, what what that is? Uh, I don't think we'd have percentages as such. Um, I mean, also, you, you can add in there a lot of properties that have green bins that have never signed up to the, um, re, re, you know, the thirty-six pound mm. recycling service. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know the number of bins we've got hanging around that are not being used. Um, but trying to head off where I think you're going, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's something we have considered. Uh, could people use those bins instead of having a bag? There is a fundamental problem there. And I'll give you my example. It's an equality issue. So I chose to pay the £36 a year. Well, actually, I pay for five bins, but don't get me started. Um, I choose to pay the £36 a year. So I don't have a spare bin. My neighbour, just for the sake of argument, decided not to pay the £36 a year, do the wrong thing and throw it in his black bin. Now, we as a council decided not to get in the way with that and not make an issue of it, but I'm technically ensuring my waste is recycled properly and paying the £36 a year. So I don't have a spare bin. My neighbour who's doing incessance of argument the wrong thing has a spare bin. Now, the minute I'm given a bag and told to put your paper and card in there, and I see my neighbour putting a green bin out or a blue bin out, I'm going to be straight on the phone to Andrew Barron and say, I want a bin now because this is not fair. I did the right things. I haven't got a spare bin. How come he gets a benefit, my next door neighbour, when I don't? Then when I'm delivered a bin, my neighbour on that side is going to go, hang on a minute, and it will snowball. And we will be asking council for £700,000 worth of new bins. So while there will be bins lying around town, 
it's about making sure everybody's got the same opportunity and we've got a serious equality issue and I won't go as far as say you could end up at judicial review but worse things have been to judicial review so we've got a real danger with allowing people to use that bin that happens to have spare when somebody who hasn't got the spare bin because they've done the right things will be forced onto the bag with a waste management service it's got to be fair and equitable everybody and it's got to be the same for everybody so everybody understands it if you run in several different ways of collecting waste it will get confusing and it really will Andrew, yeah, Chef, I can just come in on, on that very point. I think the um, a, a lot of this is, is actually as simple as, as the colour of the bin, um, and I know that may sound quite a, 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 a trite thing to say, but if you have somebody using a let, let's say for example a, a burgundy bin for paper, and the neighbour is putting a green bin with paper in out, a the collection crews won't really know what's going on because they see you know so many different properties they won't know what's what's necessarily in there and actually a lot of people put bins out by color when they see them so you could actually upset half a round by somebody putting a green bin out on the on, on the wrong day and it, things have to be very simple for it to work at all levels as as, as, as Nigel said earlier um, you know it, waste is reliant on good cooperation from residents to do the right thing from the collection crews to do the right thing to, uh, to, to us having the right policies in place to make sure that, that everybody can. So the simpler it is and the more obvious it is, the, the, the better, I, I, I think. Thanks. Thank, thanks, Andrew. Yeah, I, 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 I see those points. Um, I, w I would add that if you've got a situation where, as, as many properties, many, many properties have two blue bins, now, to have a bag as well, if they're putting half the amount of waste in the bag, they don't then need two blue bins. So what happens to that? Well, be before, before you respond, Danny, um, do we know the percentage or the volume that is associated with carbon, ca uh, card and paper in a bin compared with other recyclables, tin, tins and bottles and... Uh, for the actual tonnages per year i'll defer to nigel in a second but what i would say is remember that like you say if you currently got two bins two blue bins you're putting out every two weeks right you're now going for week two paper and card week four plastics and tins so in reality you might still use your two bins mm. for you 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 know your other material mm. sorry every two weeks sorry yeah so yeah there's still that capacity to to, to a degree manage that and that comes back to Nigel's point, how many you know, bags would we let a single property have? So that, that's all got to be thrashed out. But the actual tonnages, I will defer to Nigel, of course. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Um, there's a lot of data floating around from the facility we take the materials to. Um, when they start to separate them into the different waste streams, we get the tonnages of the glass, the paper, the card, the cans. So we have worked out that for most families, an 80 litre bag should suffice for paper and card but we recognise um, there are some very very good recyclers out there and as part of the, the sort of fine tuning and planning we will look to obviously match um, capacity to what people need luckily the bags are relatively cheap to buy so if a family needs two three four bags um, we're hoping to be able to provide that um, but you know that we will develop the processes that will allow people particularly we've got a lot of online processes so if someone does need an extra bag it shouldn't become a problem to, to provide the family with that as far as excess blue bins out there again as part of our detailed planning we're going to talk about um, if someone doesn't really need that second and third blin that they've currently got um, what we need to do to be able to bring those bins back and reuse them uh, it would be sensible to do that rather than leave someone with a blue bin that they don't need um, so that's part of the detailed planning we'll be looking at that with the various um, task groups of members thanks thanks Nigel um, it's interesting to know that tip you've, you've got information on typical family usages as far as the volumes that it that it takes up because uh, I've I've certainly seem to use a lot fill my bin with a lot more paper and card than I do tins and bottles really um, I was kind of thinking that 
for, for, for people like that, I'd end up with a bag that was too small and a bin that was too big, <laughs> in effect. So I, I wondered whether those sort of all those options have been have been actually analysed. This scheme is at, will actually give residents more capacity because you've still got your 240 litre blue bin and you've got your 80 litres of uh, paper and card. What we're seeing with materials now, news and PAMs are declining. Uh, people don't buy newspapers like they used to, but card is going up mm. as the home delivery services have really kicked in, particularly through COVID. But we anticipate, and we, when we all come to order the bags, we will be ordering um, you know, sort of one and a half bags or 1.3 bags per property because we know there will be demand out there. Um, people will want a second bag, so. Um, but let's say the, the, the unit costs are relatively cheap, so it is a, it is part of the service, and we've built it into the modelling to provide a second and possibly a third bag. We've not looked at putting a limit on bags at the moment, but we recognise that some families will need some more capacity, and we do it with the other services. Some properties have um, two black bins because of the number of occupants, so we, we're used to matching. Um, resource to demand it's, it's nothing nothing that we've never done before so uh, we're optimistic particularly with online forms and systems we can we can match we can match what people need at the end of the day thanks thanks Nigel so all of a sudden the 104k for bags is going up c could potentially go up to 300k if everybody had a third bag as or is that factored in the 100k it's factored in, uh, it is factored in. Okay. Okay. Um, it's also interesting. I've, I've, I will bring the rest of the committee in in a minute, but I just want to get some of my stuff, uh, my concerns out of the way with. Um, it's interesting you mentioned about trying to get everything, everybody working in the same simple manner. Um, the high rise runs a different system, for example. So. It's kind of an exception to, to 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 a rule that you're that you're gonna break. <laughs> well, it, it has to run to a degree to a different system because we don't live on our bin and climbing the stairs to get the pin from outside the front door. So it has to run a different way. It's simpler the nature of what the building is. But an actual house itself, everybody needs to be using the same system for simplicity. Everybody knows where they stand. Everybody knows where it is. Our crews know exactly what they're dealing with. But we do accept the high rises managed different and H block in Stonedale. <laughs> so, um, we're going to have to survey all of our multi occupants multi-occupancy properties because there's a myriad of designs out there some have got communal internal bin stores some have got external so we, we're going to have to spend a period of time now looking at each of those premises and we'll have to design um, the service um, around what we find at each of those properties but the high rise yes it, it's difficult I think the 12 13 floors mm -hmm. trying to use the shoot systems for different commodities has proved a challenge but we'll get there yeah Th thanks Nigel um, so from a from an operational point of view and I hope this isn't within the detail but we have one truck with two holes in it is it is it like that or is it <laughs> how, how, do, how how does it operate <laughs> it's split um, you've got a sort of 67 percent side for the glass cans and plastic and about a 33% side for the um, for the card and paper. So in effect, it's two bodies um, sort of welded together for want of a blunt expression. But you've got one side for one commodity and one side for the other, and they've got each got their own pack of plates and rams, etc. So it's re really two trucks stuck together. And obviously, we've got to put the materials on the correct side to make sure we don't get uh, contamination issues. Um. Interesting, those percentages, 6, 60, 60, 40, or 65, 35, or, or whatever, that um, I'm guessing it does rely a little bit on, on on people crushing their cardboard down, or I guess the truck does that for us. It's the plastics on the lot. The plastics go on the larger side because plastic has such a memory. Trying to okay. That plastic it keeps wants to fight back. So. Uh, and as we keep pushing for paperless society, I think that figure will go even more that way. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, right. I have further questions, but I'm going to invite uh, committee if uh, if any anybody else has got any questions. No. Rosie. I have, but they're very practical ones. So, um, the bag. I know we don't know exactly where we're going to be putting it after it's been emptied, but I would imagine it's going back in the bin because it's going to be flying about otherwise, isn't it? it might be okay. Um, I think some of the elderly people and residents would find it quite hard to reach down into the bin to lift that bag back out again while it was empty. I certainly would. We do provide assisted collections to uh, residents that need it. It's not just the elderly, disabled, etc. And again, part of our working groups will be looking at that level of detail. If the collectors have to take the bin back and the bag back, maybe look to leave the bag in the porch or in a convenient location. So where we have assisted collections, we have all the full details of the properties. So we'll, we'll look to find a solution for residents. There's a computer screen in the truck, so we tell them if we get any property, this is you've got to go into the garage and tell us to get yes. out and do it and all that. But no, I do understand the point of the, if, if the bag does drop to the bottom of the bin, that could be difficult. It could be difficult for all residents, to be honest. But um, what we've seen in Stafford and Newcastle, they tend to um, raise the lid and leave the bag sort of half in and out, so um, it doesn't doesn't generally fall within to the bin, but. Certainly for assisted collections, we'll, we'll take the level of care that we need to to make sure we don't cause the resident a problem. But again, this is all the fine tuning and the work we need to do because we're going to have to go through the training the operatives, all the sort of things we do to make sure we get a high quality service. But thank you for raising that issue. That's something we will look at. And I'll just go one further with that then. Um, with the assisted collection, with the rollout of this new process, can we do some sort of campaign to let people know that there is an assisted collection available there, if possible? Because it might be something people might not know about. Well, if it's outside your mm. website. Yeah. Thank you. I, th I think that, if I can just add there, I think that's important. I didn't, I didn't actually know there was an assisted collection service, but. Uh, no, I, just, I think it's 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 absolutely fair comment because uh, th that group of people is probably more vulnerable and actually may not have access to the internet. So I think it's a really valid point mm. um, that it forms part. It's got to be a very detailed communication plan anyway, as as, as with any service change, um, you know, re regardless of, of receptacle. That I think uh, you know mem members are keen to see a dual stream service implemented. Um, that in itself is a fundamental change. So uh, yeah, you know, the, the more information we can get out there, the, the better. Make it work. Thanks, Andrew. So can I also add, um, our crews are very good. Actually, they do get to know the residents and those that are struggling. And when they do come across a family that they know or an individual, they will. Um, they'll again. We've got in cab units that they will pass the messages back to us. That they're very good at spotting things where people do struggle. So uh, I'm confident, even if people don't see the, the comms. Uh, the crews will come across those people that do need the help. They tend to do the same round, week in, week out, so they get to know the community. Thanks, thanks, Nigel. Um, Rosie, have you? Yeah, okay. Um, we touched on earlier the tray within a bin, and I've seen that in operation in other local authorities. Um, can you explain what the issue? with regard to that is because I've not really observed any any particular problems. State that. One of the big issues and uh, my mom still lives in uh, she lives in Birmingham she's got the caddy within the bin I think it's about 35 litres the uh, the box that sits in the top of the bin so you've straight away you've got a capacity issue there and if you think about it um, whilst we can give people an extra bag two bags three bags we can do that how would you give residents an extra caddy within mm. the bin mm. where would that sit because it's, it's an open top caddy yeah, yeah. so you don't want those lying around next to the bin so you've got that capacity issue and then as we've mentioned earlier having to because it's quite a deep mm. caddy you've got to lift that above the height of the bin 
So you're putting strain on all of your, your back, your muscles. Each collector's doing 550 to 600 a day. If they're working a five day week, that's 3,000 a week. It starts to take its toll on the body, but they're the real the two issues: capacity and, and health and safety. When it comes Thanks, to that Nigel. Condition. Just before I bring Danny, did you want to? Just before I bring you in, I just wanted to make a comment that yep. understand what you're saying, but it is it has only got paper and cardboard in it, which isn't the most heavy heavy thing in the world. Um, that I'd just make it make that comment. Sorry. Danny, did you? Did yeah, you yeah you're absolutely correct. Sometimes it's not very heavy, depending on how much you've bunged in it. Mm. But do it three times, three thousand times a week. Mm. Remember, you're bending and lifting, bending and lifting, bending and lifting. It causes a lot of hernias mm. in these staff. I mean, I know a lot of councils are phasing them out at the minute because okay. of the amount of staff that are coming down with injuries. I think it's pro probably just worth worth noting that um, the, the industry seems to be going against that as a as a recommended approach. Uh, it, I think it was done because it was very easy, very neat. Mm. Um, but uh, again, from um, experience, the caddies are quite prone to damage because they get sort of, um, I'll probably use the phrase a bit glibly, but they get thrown back in the bin uh, when they've been emptied. They chip, the, the lips mm -hmm. tend to chip because they're quite brittle plastic. Uh, they then end up falling down inside the bin, have to be replaced or cutting somebody. Yeah, so there's, there's pros and cons with, with, with everything. Um, but it yeah. does seem to be the industry is, is starting to shy away from the caddy uh, as a solution. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, uh, f for sure. I, I, I certainly see a, a, a capacity issue in some respects if you compared it with, with that, for instance. Um, I guess I'm still, I'm still, personally trying to get my head round why we can't use our existing stock or 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 the consumer's existing stock of. Of, of collection devices, let's say, um, and and I would come back to the point that we have got, you know, many many households that have additional blue bins, and that that capacity will, uh, in effect, we, we won't be, they won't be making the most of their extra bins, so. <sighs> that kind of doesn't make so much sense to me uh, yeah just reiterate what we said earlier mr chairman my example of inequality like i said i've done the right things um, my neighbor didn't my neighbor's got a spare bin they're going to get a benefit i don't get and he did the wrong thing there's an equality issue with letting people use their old bins because i haven't got a spare bin because i did the right things right so i've now taken down the line of the bag while my neighbor can use his bin so I'm now going to demand from Andrew and Nigel a bin because I want fairness. I want my f what my neighbour's got. And if I don't get that fairness, I'm going to take the council judicial review. So the council then give me a bin. It will snowball and we'll have spent £700,000 before we know it. We've got to be clear that this is the process. And also that I know it's easy to sit here, having never worked in the job, and say it doesn't matter what colour it is. It, it fundamentally does when a street is lined with bins and men are coming down there, like say five, six hundred times a day, throwing it on the truck, throwing it on the truck. They can't stop and check every bin just like that. It's got to be a standard colour that everybody understands. That's what it is. It's easy to sit here and say, well, can't you put a stripe on it or check? It's far more complicated than that. Don't forget, when we get to the height of December and these crews are collecting in the dark, this is going to get complicated. That's why it's got to be a solid colour and a solid process. Otherwise, we'll get to contamination. And, and trust me, a, reje a rejected truck, you know, when it's got contamination, it costs this council a lot of money each time. Yeah, I, just, I just, oh, just before you come in, yep. Nigel, yeah, I, 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 I see, see the point. I'm just... Um, Providing some sc good scrutiny on this item, Danny. Um, Nigel. So thank you. We, if we make one mistake, if one blue bin worth of glass cans and plastic went into the paper and card side, we could run the risk of losing the whole load. That, that's mm. what worries us. When a bin collector goes down the road, I want them thinking, it's a blue bin, that's glass cans and plastic. It's not going to be paper and card. And they will go into areas, um, communal bin areas, where there'll be lots of bins of different colours. And we don't want them having to check every bin to make sure they're, that they're not missing a, a bin that they should be taking. You know, there's, there's a lot of communal developments where you can have all the colours all down in the bin stores. So it's really going to impact on operational efficiency if they've got to check every bin to make sure they've, they've got all the commodities. 
Whereas if it's the bag for the paper and card, the blue bin for glass cans and plastic, that's all they need to check on that day. I don't want them really having to be checking green bins and, and other coloured bins, just in case. So you would see the number of missed bin complaints going up. Um, it's going back to having that simple service. And the guys, you know, they do the best, but it becomes a very repetitive job. Keeping it simple reduces the chances of errors at the end of the day. Thank you. Andrew? It's, it's your probably might be helpful for the committee to uh, to know um, when we ask the market to put disposal solutions together um, the contamination rate um, for paper I think was one and a half percent so that is absolutely tiny um, to allow and if if the contamination rate is greater than that then it is rejected and it's a double whammy because not only do we not get any potential income from that um, we have to pay a commercial rate for disposal of it. So, uh, you know, quite often a, um, a, a whole load could cost a thousand pounds to to dispose of for a tiny wee bit of contamination. So this is the way the market has gone because they're now demanding quality rather than quantity. In in the good old days, our contamination allowance was about fifteen percent, and you know that was. We were on the margins from time to time with it, uh, with, with commingled collection, um, and we've had quite a lot of expensive rejected loads. But nowadays, it's quality, not quantity. So I think that just perhaps highlights the difference okay. in, uh, in 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 what we're, we're after. Thanks, Andrew. No, Nigel, just if we could make one more point: paper and card being in that bag, because it's likely to be decanted into a bin before being put on the back of the truck gives the operatives a great chance of spotting anything that shouldn't be in the blue bin. If it's in a bin, it's too late because it'll have gone into the back of the truck and we can't retrieve materials out the back of the truck for safety reasons. Operatives cannot be going over the top of the bin lifts. Um, you've got a real risk of serious injury and death there. But the fact that that's likely to be tipped into what's known as a slave bin gives us a real opportunity. So if there's something in there, we can spot it well before it gets to the truck. That's, that's why the, the bag is really quite popular in terms of or the, probably the best methodology of getting the quality levels we need to. One and a half percent is a really tight contamination level to achieve. Okay, thank, thank you. Ben. Yeah, just a, a couple of things. Um, we, we've been talking about um, in the past people have had extra blue bins um, given out to them and, and by going to this, the dual stream, um, they're potentially not going to use that. Is there an option where we will collect the extra bins off people um, if they haven't got the space um, for them? Is that is that something that's been that's been put in? That's something we're looking as part of the fine tuning. Yes. Okay. Um, we we don't know how quickly we'll be able to bring mm -hmm. them in, but we'll have to have a program, kind yep. of an efficient program. So we're not going to that street yep. today. Another street. So we'll build up collection programs okay. to do that as efficiently as possible. And then, just on the on the bags, um, how durable have they been found to be um, by other authorities that have used this this dual stream? Uh, you know, are, are we th are we talking if they're dragged across the floor because they're too heavy? Are we going to be going through bags at a rate of knots, or you know, are they? I'm probably best placed to answer that one. Um, I'm about two two and a half years in, and uh, the bag's still in fine fettle. That's with I'm, I'm a reasonably good recycler personally, so. Mm -hmm. Um, that's with fair use, and that's on a concrete, hard standing with a gravel drive. It quite often gets dragged across. And how how do how do you find them with the uh, like? Let's say this morning, for instance, we had a massive downpour of of rain, um, where a lot of places just flooded in seconds. So I imagine with these, they're they're not fully waterproof, but they go some way with the flap over the top. Um, do they hold water? Is there drainage in there? If 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 there is going to be a considerable amount of water goes into that, um, if that does happen, is that going to affect the quality of the recycler? Um, will that affect? You know, how's that going to that going to work? Yes, thank you. It, it clearly is a risk. Yes, um, and the sort of conditions we've had today, the paper and card will, will get wet. But again, as part of the detailed planning, we will be working with the MRF 
facility that it goes mm -hmm. to to see if they can blend materials. Yep. Hopefully it won't rain every day for a mm. week, so they might be able to put the, the wet material aside, yep. and then when it's drier on the next day and the day after, they'll mm -hmm. try and blend it to, to, to deal with that. But if, if it rained every day for a week, yeah. yes, we'd have issues. But it, uh, I'd imagine the other thing it would be as well, if you get a, a lot of wet paper in there, um, that's going to cause quite a mess inside the bags as well. So are we then going to need bags cleaned or replacement bags because there's all wet paper stuck to the side of it or it I did say I wasn't going to bring personal experience into this because it's probably <laughs> it's not appropriate but I, I have not noticed it being an issue okay. um, but yeah the, the, the contents do sometimes get wet but it, it's quite it good to hear that you uh, that yeah, your personal experience mm -hmm. actually because it, it does answer some of them them questions yeah. that I think inevitably will be asked mm -hmm. Uh, and then, sorry if you, if you just indulge me for a second, Chair. Uh, just my final thing is, how environmentally friendly are, are, are these bags? Can they be recycled when they come to the end of their life cycle, or are they going to have to go into landfill? Nigel. I'll be honest, I don't know at the moment, but we, we, I will do my, uh, do my research on it. There's obviously a limited number of manufacturers we can go to. Mm -hmm. And obviously there are supply issues in the market, but it's a question we can ask. We've actually built into our financial models 10% turnover, so we're trying. You know, hope hopefully we will get a good life out of them. Um, but no, I will. I'll, I'll look into the issue of how recyclable they are at the end of, end of their useful life. My, my, my concern would be, and I, 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 what Daniel just said, that nothing goes into landfill in Staffordshire. But um, you know, people move around and. And if somebody moves, they may well take this with them, and they end up somewhere else, and it goes into landfill, and and it's not, you know, it, it doesn't naturally break down, or it takes, you know, a hundred years to break down, all of that. That's my concern, is because as as we're ever more concerned about the environment and and things like that, uh, I wouldn't wouldn't be overly happy if we're putting something onto the market that's going to take a hundred or two hundred years to decompose. Thanks, thanks, Ben. And, and just just before, on, on there's there's other members waiting, but just to, in addition to your comment about um, the, um, the 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 wearing out, and I think in general, what do we have anything more than anecdotal evidence as far as the loss rate? Because I look at that bag, and I look at it for a number of uses. Um, not to say that I would want to, u I would use it for a number of other uses, but I can see the advantage of that bag for for other things, and um, I, it, it's 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 far easier if it's just stuck on the side of somebody's wheelie bin to just carry off than a wheelie bin is. So I don't know if we have any evidence from other authorities. Um, with regard to the overall loss rate of of those style of bags, Nigel. Yes, thank you. That's why we we built in this ten percent turnover rate per annum. So um, that's the sort of evidence we're getting from Newcastle and Stafford is um, turnover. But that does include new properties as well. So, but um, um, there isn't sort of ten or twenty years of evidence in the UK. It's all fairly recent as authorities have moved to a bag system and. Um, time, time will tell, um, but as I say, we've gone with a 10% turnover figure for the time being, but obviously we'll look to review it um, as time moves on. Thank you. Andrew? I, th I think I th perhaps just take members back to when uh, we introduced wheelie bins some considerable time ago. Um, we actually had to, um, with regrets, implement a policy of charging people for wheelie bins that went missing. There was an active black market in, in wheelie bins. <laughs> Um, seem to be because people used to either um, lose them, borrow them, or, or other um, for quite some considerable time. Um, you know, it's going back probably 10 years or so. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it's just, just a, you know, for, as, a, as a bit of background to, to the process of uh, when something's new, yes, I absolutely agree. Mm. But it does settle down over time. But thanks, Andrew. Danny. So yeah, I was just going to follow that up. I think it was around 2007-8 we introduced a charge for replacement bins. And I don't remember the figures exactly, Mr Chairman. We showed something around. We'd had 5,000 requests for a new bin in 2007. When we introduced the £15 charge to replace your bin, I think we had 20 all year. It's amazing how we fixed that problem, didn't we? 
Th- th- thank you. Um, Dan. Thank you. Uh, I just want to look a bit closer at the contamination. Um, there's obviously a lot of letters and envelopes have got the plastic cover slip for the address. Mm. Are customers going to be expected to take that bit of plastic off? Is that going to be the con- sort of contamination that's going to be being looked at there? Yeah. It's, um, it's a permitted item on the list, so the uh, reprocessors do accept that. They won't count that as contamination. Uh, it'll be something, you know, um, a bottle, a plastic bottle, or something else went into the bag. Um, same as things like staples and other things within magazines. They're not generally counted as co- common, uh, contamination. They're accepted as part of the, ar- of the, of the article. It's the other way around as well. If you think of a, you know, um, a bottle of Pepsi, it's got paper wrapped around the plastic bottle. It, it, it's similar. It's permitted, Cheers. and the industry understand it. Yep. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Um, Martin. Thank you. Um, yeah. Firstly, a comment. It's a shame we're here um, again. Um, we've gone. We're going from a Rolls Royce service to um, well, this um, it reminds me of um, of the trays we used to have um, before the bins. Um, it is a shame, it's regrettable, but none of us really wanted it. I think that's a point to iterate because we're all residents of Tamworth and we prefer to have it the way it was. Um, I just pick up on what you you said, Nigel, about the um, <clears throat> the operatives spotting something in the bag. What I know it's possibly operational detail, but what are they likely to do at that point? Are they likely to reject the bag and leave it there with everything in it? Or are they going to remove the contaminant, do we think? Again, that's part of the finer detail that we'll be looking at. What we've tended to do in the past is um, take, as long as it's not too heavily contaminated, the bag, if it was just one or two items in there, uh, look to empty the, the good materials that we can accept, then leave um, the, the say, offending article, the, the unwanted article, in the bag so it serves as a message for the resident. But what we've always tried to do is work with residents. We don't like to get heavy-handed. It's about cooperation, education, working with them. Um, and plus, we do employ recycling officers as well who will go and, and, and assist and try and educate the public. But we're hoping, because it is paper and card, um, that's a message we can get over to the residents pretty simply. And that, you know, it's not for the other materials to go into that. But no, if it was heavily contaminated, completely with the wrong materials, yes, we'd probably have to reject it. But if it's just the odd, odd thing, we'll look to educate by leaving that in the bag. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Um, Andy. Thanks, Chair. Um, so just touching on the, the supply um, that, that, we, that we briefly mentioned earlier, do we are we confident that, obviously, in the current light we're seeing, um, certain items in shops and, and, and various petrol stations short on supply. Are we confident that um, when, when, when we have the date that we've got the, we've got the supply of these bags necessary to fulfil the requirements of the town? Uh, that's what we're currently working on at the moment. We've, we're getting various samples of the bags. We're liaising with the manufacturers. We're talking about our procurement routes. Um, at the moment, if we can get orders placed within the next sort of three or four or five weeks, we're looking at sort of deliveries sort of late February at the moment. But I can't at the moment give anybody a cast iron guarantee because you only need another ship stuck in the Suez Canal or something like that to happen. Uh, it's, you know, it's lo- the logistics industry is, uh, you know, it's, it's facing a lot of challenges at the moment. But no, we, um, it's something we'll place a keep very tight iron same as the trucks we're having to order new trucks to collect the materials those orders have already been repla- uh, placed but we're watching the build we're getting a weekly update on the build program um, obviously if we get wind of something happening we still have time to play with the start date uh, and we, we obviously don't want to go live with the service if the trucks aren't there or the bags aren't there something we'll have to address a little bit further into the project as, as and when if, if we do find out there are issues Danny. Yeah, I think uh, Andy actually makes an absolutely cracking point. At some point, we've got to place an order. So at some point, we've got to all be sure as 30 members that we're going in the right direction. Because the longer we drag this out, and that's not to say you shouldn't scrutinise, Mr Chairman, absolutely cracking question this evening, but you raise a fair point. The longer we drag this out, the later we place this order, the more we'll miss our transition date. 
if we miss our transition date, we'll still be co-mingling into next June, and we will be paying the cost of sending trucks to Gateshead rather than the contractor. That's a danger I really want to avoid. So at some point, we've got to nail down what is it we want to deliver. Thank you. Do you have any other comments, Andy? Or no, yeah, yeah. The, well, you can see the supply issues at, uh, at the minute with uh, with various other things. The only other question I was going to ask is, um, aside from cost, another bin would be a superior option. Let's be honest. If if if, if money was no object, it would be. However, one of the uh, problems cited um, for why we're not ordering a bin, aside from cost, is time. What what's the delay on that? How come we've arrived at a point whereby we are not, you know, we 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 we're almost leaving ourselves a little bit exposed by not having the enough time to order bins for everybody in Tamworth, and it's almost because of that that options kind of off the table. When you know, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be scrutinising it right if I didn't say that had we have tried to order the bins earlier, we might have had had that option on the table. Thanks, I know Danny. I think you. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to trying to pick my words very carefully here, Mr. Chairman. So if anybody thinks I'm insulting anybody, I'm really trying not to. I'm just trying to get to the point. Um, not something I'd normally say in a public meeting, but the Conservative group had a full presentation on this in February and took a unanimous decision to go down the lines of bins and bags. We went then met with Litchfield, our partners in Joint Waste, and we did a deal to do this and we signed on with Litchfield, shook hands, everything else to do down this line. We then went and sat with the County Council over three months and negotiated the costs of how to deliver the new service with them picking up 50% of the new transition costs. We then took it to Cabinet twice and this is the first time anybody's asked that question. What's basically happened is, as far as I've been concerned, and Councillor Chesworth did that presentation with me in February, we were nailed on for bags and bins. And this is the first time it, we've been called to say, actually, we might want to do something else. So we've not, ex we, if, we did, if we made that decision in February to go with the bins, we could have been looking to place the order. But because, as far as we are concerned, as a portfolio and officers, the decision has been made, and it's been made through all the channels, has been to scrutiny to us before as well, that this was the decision, we've proceeded down the bag line. So if we now change to bins, we've missed the lead time to order the bins. Potentially, I can't sit here and guarantee it couldn't be done, but our feedback from the industry is nine months to a year. You're looking to get, you know, you're thinking 30 odd thousand properties worth of bins, 25 pound a bin, that's a lot of money. You're looking at a difference between buying bins and buying those bags of 700,000 pound of capital we don't have. We would potentially have to borrow it or take it out of the property fund budget, which means we lose future revenue uh, from the property funds. So that, that's why I think members in general went down the line of the bags. It was the affordable option. So you're absolutely right. If money was no object, I'm pretty sure we'd all just order bins. It's simple, it's to the point. I think perhaps just before Nigel comes in, the, the other point to, to, probably to, to note is if you've got a very small property, actually a bag might be a better solution. So I think you know th th there's I don't disagree with what you say you know a, a, a bin is uh, a much easier receptacle, um, but if you haven't got any space to put it, a bag might be more suitable, possibly. But like you say there's no there's no panacea at all with this. I think wh whatever um, we do, somebody won't be happy with it. So we have to try and get the service that's going to be the most accessible for the general um, sort of person. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> So yeah, I, th I think yeah. I mean, my point is not that the bin's the better option. I, I do actually think the bag's the better option with what we're dealing with. I'm I'm saying that maybe we need to be a little bit more fleet of foot, especially in 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 terms of you know what what's going on in the world at the minute. We need to be a bit a little bit quicker making a few decisions. As Thanks. it counts. Thanks, Andy. Um, other people are waiting. I know, but I I just wanted to sort of say that yes, although although this topic of waste recycling had come through scrutiny it was very much um, at, at an early early stage and was really looking at the um, the objective of dual streaming or not as opposed to the operate what I would describe as operational detail or the collection method so um, while, I, while I agree with 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 Danny on on some points I may not so much on others. <laughs> um, ben, um, I just wanted to pass a comment on the um, the, the plastic bin thing. Actually, um, 
Danny was just saying if we if we'd have decided in February that we could that, that we were going to go down plastic bins, we probably could have got the order in and would have had the bins. Um, I'd I'd argue that fact that we would have got the bins um, as I work for a company that makes plastic bins and, and works in the industry that, that makes flat bins. Um, I can pretty much guarantee we wouldn't have got the bins because the the plastic industry, the same as any other industry at the moment, is struggling due to um, the transportation industry can't can't deliver. It's very difficult at the minute to get virgin plastic um, to be able to actually make the product. So I think I think taking that on board, re regardless of how early we we the, would have made the decision on this, um, it's always very difficult to foresee what's going to happen in the future and what's going to actually affect the outcome of the decision that you've made. Um, I don't know. I think for me, I, I don't like bins full stop. I, I just think they're an eyesore um, and, a, and an extra and an extra, yeah, and, a, and, a, and an extra one. It, just the thought of an extra one in my garden is just like, you know. Um, but I think, yeah, it, it's it, it, it is it is difficult to, to foresee them them problems that that happen. Um, but yeah, that was that was just my comment on that. Thanks, thanks, Ben. Um, John, thanks, Chair. Um, I'm slightly biased, perhaps. Um, I, I think bins would have been an horrendous decision. Another bin on with Ben. I think most most properties in Tamworth certainly um, don't have the capacity to store another bin. Uh, we saw people in the local press over the last couple of years complaining because they got green bins that they didn't want and they wanted us to take them back. Um, that The green bin issue was slightly different because of the charge. Um, but I think the vast majority of people can't store another bin. They've already got three, four bins outside the front of their properties. Um, and we've, we've got a spare green bin now, um, partly because I'm tight and I only wanted to pay one charge, and partly because we tarmac some of our garden so I don't have the grass cuttings anymore. Um, so the, that bag will go in my spare green bin to keep it out of the way, so that's fine. Um, I actually think these bags are quite good. Some areas that I've seen have got much smaller bags. Um, with, with obviously less capacity and aren't very practical. These are quite good if we can have more than one, brilliant. My only concern with cardboard, um, it won't be this Christmas, it'll be Christmas next year particularly. Amazon, our little friends, have a, a propensity to put something that size in a box big enough for a washing machine, mm. as we all know. Um, I've had a memory card in a box big enough for a sofa once. Um, that's obviously a lot of cardboard and even if you break it down and flatten it as much as you can it won't go in a bag it won't go in two bags in some cases are we going to drive people and this will i'm sure will be in the detail that you're going to look at nigel but are we going to drive people in those situations down the route of taking all their cardboard to the tip um sorry recycling center or um, are we going to have, at certain times, are we going to have an amnesty where you can leave extra cardboard at the side? I suppose that depends on the capacity of the vehicle. Interesting questions. Nigel? Yes, again, it's, it's, it's going to be looked into the detail. Um, the main peak periods we do have, of, of, as you mentioned, Christmas, uh, we tend to ask residents to uh, just tie together the big card, <coughs> piece of string, um, and operationally um, we're gearing up to be able to take that. Um, majority of the time, yes, we do want it in the bag because of the risk of litter, etc, etc, but at Christmas um, it becomes, you know, we, we, we have to cope with those issues and, and that's what we will plan to do. Obviously this Christmas isn't going to be effective, as you say, it'll be the following Christmas, but um, it's part of the learning curve and, um, you know, we will look to, to take as, as much of the material as we possibly can from residents. We don't want to leave it on the streets at all. No, and that's exactly my concern is that we end up with loads of piles of cardboard at the end of streets and round sort of shops and all this kind of stuff because people can't can't get rid of it. Um, so yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks, John. Danny, I think you wanted to make a, a point. I, I think Nigel's actually made the point perfectly. Um, I mean, it's a civil, civic amenities site. <laughs> <laughs> Call it what you will. It's a tip. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions from uh, from members at the moment? No. Okay. I'll, I've got to, I've got some more questions and comments. I'm going to keep keep throwing in. Um, I guess I still 
keep coming back to this better use of the existing equipment we've got and the fact that we're going to have num a number of people with with extra bins that they're not going to be using <coughs> um, and if there's additional bags going to be um, supplied or potentially supplied then that's an addition I, I still see that as an addi additional on cost and and ones that are lost let's let's say overall lost and I do genuinely think that closes the gap um, on bins versus bags I, well I, not bins versus bags I don't, I, I'm, I'm not convinced having extra bins are a, are a, a way forward but I still think we could use better use the the bins that we have in circulation let's say at, at, at residence properties and I'm concerned that that hasn't been factored in uh, enough at the moment so I'd um, like some further comment or reaction to that Danny I'm still going to argue Mr Chairman get, get around the equality issue I don't understand how we get around the equality issue that people that don't have that spare bin right now are going to have to have a bag mm. people that did the wrong things will have a spare bin or historically have had two blue bins either way are now going to get a different service I don't understand the equality thing and when somebody takes the judicial review because they're not receiving a service another resident is what are we going to do then we're going to go out of £700,000 worth of bins you've got to make it one service I know there's bins out there and I know we need to think about what do we do with that long term but and I still use my example. I've paid my £36 a year for my green bin to be emptied. My neighbour is just throwing it in his black. He's got a spare bin. So he's now going to get a bin while I've got a bag. But I did the right things. That's not fair. So I now want this council to give me a bin. My neighbour now wants this council. All of a sudden, we're out buying £700,000 worth of bins. I, can't, I still can't get around. How are you solving the equality issue? OK. Um, I understand what, you, what, you, what you're saying. And you're coming, from it, coming at it from a... A green bin point of view I'm probably trying to say we've got a number and a large number and we, we don't know what those numbers are I've not been able to ascertain that a number of properties that have got two blue bins that if they're going to be putting their paper and card <coughs> in an additional receptacle they then don't need those two blue bins they might only need one blue bin and therefore why can't they put their paper and card in the blue bin that they're just separated at source as opposed as opposed to at the uh, at the truck kind of thing so um, uh, I'd say on a cold on a cold December morning when it's absolutely pitch black and there's two blue bins sat there one's got paper and card in it one's got plastics in it and these operators are supposed to get a flashlight out and check every single bin to make sure they're putting the right thing in the truck the rounds will take twice as long we'll go from seven crews to 14 crews there's a whole host of operational issues with allowing people just to use the odd bin they've got lying around. It's got to be a specific recyclable that stand, uh, recyclable collection unit that stands out to the operator on the side of the street on those dark mornings. If we're going to confuse this by letting people do all kinds of different things, this is going to get complicated. We're going to have rejected loads left, right and centre that we need to dispose of. We've got to make this as straightforward and as fair as possible to everybody. That does leave a complication that loads of people have got spare bins. I've got six wheelie bins in my back garden, got three green ones that I pay for, two blue ones and a black. I don't want any more bins. I don't particularly want a sack. I, to be honest, I want this council to give me a big black bin. I throw everything in mm -hmm. it and they just get rid of it. But we know the real world doesn't work like that anymore. Absolutely. But yeah, I, st I still don't know how you solve that complication of the operational risks and the fairness to it. I don't know the way around it. Um, I, I will come back at that, but uh, Nigel. Thank you. Um, we're already planning to bring back unwanted blue bins. House building programmes in both districts now have, have really taken off. So there is an opportunity, as long as the bin is in a reasonable condition and can be repaired, we can use those for, for new properties and other replacements. Uh, we don't want to see that asset um, not used out there, but obviously it's a return programme. We'll need to carefully plan, look at 
try and make it as efficient as possible, but there is going to be an opportunity. If people do not want their second and third blue bin, we're, we're seriously looking at how we can we can accommodate their request to bring the bin back in and then put it back into to reuse, either at a new property or as a replacement at, at an existing property. Yep. So we, wo we won't let that resource be wasted. Okay, thanks, Nigel. I, I, I have a probably had an opinion on if I'd just bought a shiny new house and I was given a second hand blue bin I think I'd probably feel a little bit disgruntled but uh, but that's that's another discussion for another day I guess um, John I think you <laughs> thanks chair um, I was just gonna make a, an observation first of all on the, the people who've got second bins uh, second blue bins um, in the short term that they can keep their blue bag in their blue bin pending collection because they're no worse off they've still got two bins and they're still putting stuff in it um, in the longer term Nigel's just answered my question actually in the longer term if they've got spare blue bins get them collected and we can use them on new new bills because the new bills will still be going up even post next May because it's Litchfield and Tamworth the service so you know it's not just Tamworth's new houses it's Litchfield's new houses and hopefully they'll be having lots more over on their nice green areas um, so they can take them away in the short term you could store your blue bag in your blue bin pending collection and, and don't forget although you'll, you'll have a collection of something every two weeks it'll be a bag week two and a bin week four um, that means your bins gonna, are going to fill up with glass and plastic over a four week period so in theory you could end up using more than a blue bin, one blue bin for plastic and glass, potentially. Um, but we don't know until we've started the service, I guess. But my, my, the reason I wanted to speak was to ask the question, and Nigel's answered it, about the new builds. Sorry, it, it, both the bag and the bin will be collected on the same day, every fortnight. Mm. There's, there's not okay. going to be a, a, sorry, another sorry. gap now. It's, no, uh, that, that was me that misspoke. Yes. Yeah, I do apologise. So, no, so you should. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, would, I would still say if I'd bought a shiny new new property and I was given or supplied a, a, a second-hand blue bin, I wouldn't be very happy with this authority. I really believe there would be... Um, that, that, that's huge, yeah. I wouldn't care, personally. Well, <laughs> I, th I, th I think I'm reasonably typical. I think I think people would care. I think people, people are get very uh, very proud of their bins um, Danny uh, yeah um, I as you know recently uh, earlier this year bought an absolutely brand new property and I got two second hand bins and as John said I didn't really care maybe there's people that will but just saying tongue, tongue in cheek purely Mr Chairman purely tongue in cheek remember most of the house building over the next few years will be taken care of in, taken care of in Litchfield mm. so I'm quite happy for Litchfield <laughs> to take time with second hand goods <laughs> <laughs> um okay i just want to <coughs> i just want to get some some evidence i guess on how many authorities do actually use this bag system we know that um, newcastle use that use that system and but is is there a number around the country and how long have they been going? Try and answer that. Um, we've also got another two authorities in Staffordshire, both Cannock yeah. and South Staffs, that are moving to that system. Um, as Councillor Cook mentioned um, earlier, the turning point was really 2018 when China um, started saying they didn't want inferior quality materials. So there, ha there aren't a lot. There isn't a lot of evidence out there at the moment. Um, I, uh, I don't know of any authority that's been going five or ten years on a bag, bag and bin system. Um, but it was the same um, when we started in 2004 with alternate systems, and boxes and um, materials collected every fortnight. We have to live, to go through the learning curve. We will make the little mistakes that we made, but we'll gradually improve the service 
get it working, settle it down. Any new service always takes six to 12 months to settle down. Um, crews have to new, learn new rounds. We have to get used to dealing with um, different inquiries from the public. But we're confident from what we've seen at the other Staffordshire authorities that this service will settle down and it'll become a high quality service that delivers good quality recycling. Newcastle, um, they don't have any rejected loads. And what we can gather from Stafford, again, high quality materials. And that's what we're at, that's the main aim that we're trying to do. Obviously give the public good service, but it's no good collecting materials that are going to be rejected at the end of the day. Quality is the absolute essential buzzword here. If it's going to go on to be reused for something else, the quality has to be there. But you know, there's, there's probably two or three years at best of authorities operating on these systems. Um, maybe I can come back in a year's time or 18 months' time and give you sort of uh, more and more evidence and more information on how, how it's gone. But sometimes you just have to learn as you're going along. But we are confident from what we've seen. We will get to a high standard. Thanks, Nigel. Andrew. So, thanks, Chair. I mean, it's, it's, it's very commonly used in you know, places like the, you know, the, the London boroughs and things like that. Um, where they have a front door collection because of the um, the, mm. the location, so it's it certainly isn't isn't in its infancy. Um, but I think my, my, my point really was, um, and this committee will be be part of this process. Waste is changing um, fundamentally. Um, there is a, a government sort of white paper due out around sort of the waste and resource strategy going forward. Um, we don't we have an indication of what that may be, but we don't know what that means on the ground. So, you know, in three years' time, we may be collecting food waste. Um, there may be different ways of, um, you know, maybe a de deposit rental scheme for glass bottles might be implemented, which will take some of the, um, some of the, the valuable recycling out of the, you know, so the, the stuff we collect. That the whole process is, is changing um, over the next, you know, probably, what would you say, three to five years. So I think we'll be having some very challenging conversations going forward when we know a little bit more about what the, 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 the plan that the government has for how the UK deals with waste. Um, so it's, it, it's very, very much a changing feast at, at the moment. Okay, th thanks Andrew. Any further questions or comments from, from committee? I'm... I'm still still struggling with the um, the use of equipment and and uh, Danny has, has, has said quite eloquently about the uh, mentioned about the service and making it a, an easy straightforward service that, that that crosses all all bounds and is equal for everybody and I, I totally I totally get that I do feel there's there's some detail lacking that um, we've got to work through this and we've got to understand what what these this information is and um, I'm not totally convinced that the 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 ten percent turnover rate is quite high enough um, so I'm I'm mindful to want to recommend to cabinet that they they look at, at some of these details in a little bit more a little bit more before a, f a final decision is 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 reached and um, and and are happy to to provide a an evidence-based report with um, from what I've from what we've gathered tonight um, and, and and I would I would move that uh, and look for a second there. Okay, no second there. Interesting. Um, in that case, has any other committee members got any other motion that they would like to move before I before I uh, I, I Andrew? Chair, if it's helpful to the committee, chair. Um, uh, not wishing to steer anybody, uh, would it be helpful if there was a formal review process put in place for this service um, where there was potential for a change after the service has started, perhaps say at the six month point, 
something like that. So it's formally brought back to scrutiny with a performance update. And if things are awry, um, they are addressed. It's a, it's it, a, it's it's a valid a, comment. A, a yeah. Comment, Chair. Danny. Yeah, I was going to offer the ex exact same, Mr. Chairman. Um, not not going to tie myself in knots here and make promises I can't keep. But mm. as Nigel eloquently put earlier, there is an element of the slave bin. The guys pour the bag into the bin. The bin goes on the back of the truck, tips it over, carries on. So if we find out that six months point when we refer to you guys, this bag system isn't working for people of town. We can look to look at alternatives. And if then we're pushed down the bin route or some other route, there is that opportunity. I have my concerns. Everybody in here has some concerns to agree. But we've got to start, so we have to make a decision. We can now start processing forward. And I think that's where we are as a cabinet. But, you know, I understand your fears, Mr Chairman. I'm happy to come here every three months, if you wish, and give you an update as a committee of where we are, where we're progressing, where the complications are. Obviously, you'll be involved in the Joint Scrutiny Committee with Litchfield, looking at how all this unfolds, and you can keep throwing hard questions at me. We're, we're happy to keep coming back with these reassurances and the learning as we take it. If, if absolutely needed, I'm sure we can get you guys a conversation with a waste management director at either Newcastle or Stafford who could take you through how it unfolded in their areas two years ago, where the pitfalls were, did it work, where didn't it work. I'm sure we can get that if it reassures some of the members. I'm probably right in saying that, Andrew. I'm sure we can get somebody to discuss. Might, might, might have to be online, but we can get somebody to do it, surely. OK, th thanks, Danny. Yeah, um, if, if that's the case, I just want to open up to the rest of the committee if they've got any other 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 motions to make to make Andy yeah I just think that with the some of the supply chain issues we're seeing we've got a, we've, we have got a, a deadline um, to hit uh, to a degree uh, as, as I understand it and uh, you know how, how long are we going to keep going around I, th I think we just need to make a decision on it um, I, I understand your your position you want to scrutinize further that's absolutely why we're here but for me um, I just worry that we're going to end up coming round to next April and we're struggling to find bags to put on people's doorsteps. Thanks, thanks Andy. Yeah, I was very much coming from it that the, there is still some some detail that appears to be to be to be missing that would potentially impact the the way the pros where the way the surface was operated, but uh, John. Thanks, Chair. Um Based on Danny's offer, I'd happily move a motion that we take a, um, a quarterly update um, from the cabinet member and officers, chief exec, um, on progress. Uh, based on Nigel has been talking about lots more detail to be looked at. We can get updates on that detail, how it's being um, discussed and moved forward, uh, what decisions are being made, <coughs> what decisions are likely to be made. Um, and if if we could get that one-off update off um, the relevant person at Newcastle or Stafford, I think that would be quite helpful, particularly if they're seeing the service working. It would give our members some reassurance on, um, on their progress and, and therefore how things might work here. So I'd be happy to move a motion that we get a quarterly update um, from, from Danny and officers. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, John. Just for neatness, Mr Chairman, do you want to bolt on to that recommendation, Rosie's suggestion about better advertising the assistance service, just to just to get it nice and neat? Yeah, happy just, to do that. Not, not get involved, just that it's no, nice and neat that's then, that's sensible, it? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, just before I look for, for, for a second for that, I just want to bring Ben in. John. <coughs> okay. Um, we have a motion, we have, a, we have um, on the table and a seconder. Oh, sorry, Martin. Um, no, I was just—I was just going to say, Chair. Um, in terms of your, your original motion, I—I I, I came open-minded tonight, and I—I uh, I had my concerns, and I feel that I've, you know, even if we hadn't come to any kind of mo motion to pass, we would have done our job tonight as expected. We've scrutinised it, and I, I personally am—I'm trying not to let the overriding factor that I personally as a resident of Tamworth am not happy we're having to go down this route affect the the very real um, circumstance that we, we, we can't change this and we are where we are um, I, I'm trying not to let my, my feelings override where we are we, we, we are where we are um, and we, we kind of have to accept it um, 
you know, uh, unfortunately, um, we, as as residents, we 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 have to realise we kind of have to accept responsibility for the stuff we chuck away, and it's a very hard realisation that we're coming to uh, globally. I think not just in Tamworth, you know, we. we we put things in the bin and we don't think about it again. Some of us are better at recycling stuff than others. Um, some of us have been absolutely happy with the way things have been. Um, you know, when I first introduced the concept of the weekly bins at the residence meeting, um, all those years back, they were absolutely ecstatic about it. And it's a shame we're having to be in this position now, but, um, you know, I, I did have my concerns, but I'm, I'm happy with the answers that we've got, essentially, which is the whole point of this, I think, of this exercise. And um, we, we've got something out of it regardless. But, you know, again, I think I just have to reiterate that regardless of how unhappy we feel about having to be here in the first place, it's time for us to all kind of stand up and take some responsibility for the waste we're chucking away. And that's what we're doing. Martin. Okay, we have uh, we have a motion on the table and a seconder. Um, all those in favour? Thank you. That's uh, that's passed. So we'll look forward to to seeing you on a on a a more regular basis, I guess. Um, thanks very much for your time. I think that concludes our meeting for tonight. Sorry, Chair, can I just ask if, given where we are now, it's sept the end of September, can we squeeze a review in before Christmas? Is that feasible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks all, and uh, I'll close the meeting at 21 minutes past seven. Thank you.